Probability is the likelihood of something happening, and we usually think of it on a scale of zero to one. If something is impossible, then the probability is zero, of course. And if it is absolutely certain, then we say the probability is one or 100%. And of course, the probability can be anything in between. So if the probability is 0.5, then we say there's a 50% chance of the thing of interest happening. Let me quickly prove to you that you already have a great intuition about probability. And then we're gonna jump into the really interesting stuff. If I were to flip a coin and I asked you, what are the chances of us getting heads? You of course would say it's 50% because of the two equally likely possible events, there's only one that meets the criteria of interest in this case being heads. In your head, you've intuitively created a fraction and you've done a calculation. And of course the answer is 0.5 or 50%. And if I were to roll a dice and asked you, what are the chances of us rolling a one? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. The denominator at the bottom are all the equally likely possible outcomes, right? Dice one to six. The numerator at the top are the number of possible favorable outcomes that meet our criteria, in this case, a one. And if you understand that, then everything from here on is going to be easy. Now let's dig a little deeper. This is where things get fun and interesting. In this video, we'll learn about how to calculate the probability of this happening and that happening. So how likely is it that if I toss a coin and roll a dice, that I'll get a heads and get a three? We'll also look at the probability of this or that happening. So if I, again, if I roll a dice, how likely is it that I can get a three or a two? And what about conditional probability? That's the chances of this happening if that has already happened. So if you're playing poker and you know that you've got an ace, what are the chances that it's an ace of spades? We'll start with the probability of spinning a coin which gives us heads. And at the same time, we roll a dice and it shows a three. What are the chances of that happening? Here we've got heads in pink and tails in green, and you can see that there are 12 possible combinations of heads and tails and dice roll outcomes that could happen. Of the 12 equally likely possibilities, only one combination gives us both heads and three. So the probability of getting this combination is one over 12. But is there an easier way to get to the answer without having to count up all the possibilities? And the answer is, of course, yes. We can simply multiply the probability of each of these independent events to get the answer. So the probability of getting heads is one over two, and the probability of rolling a three is one over six. Multiply them together, and voila, you get one over 12. And we can quickly do the maths and calculate that the probability is 8.3%. So the lesson here is that the probability of A and B happening, in other words, both events must happen in order to meet the criteria, is the same as saying the probability of A times B. Now we make the assumption that A and B are independent. In other words, the fact that A happened doesn't impact on the chances of B happening. Toward the end of this video, we'll deal with scenarios where there is dependence, but don't worry about that for now. But what about the probability of this or that happening? Let's think about throwing a dice and calculating the probability of throwing a two or a three. Either one or the other might happen, but not both. They're what we call mutually exclusive. If one of them happens, the other can't happen because we're only throwing the dice once. Now, once again, there are six equally likely possibilities and they will be our denominator. Of those, two possible outcomes meet our criteria. So the probability of rolling a two or a three is two over six, which is equal to one over three. But is there an easier way of us getting there without having to count up all the possible outcomes? And the answer is yes. We can think about the probability of each outcome and then add them together. The chances of rolling a two is one over six, and the chances of rolling a three is one over six. If we add them together, we get two over six, which is one over three. The lesson here is that the probability of A or B taking place, so either event can happen to meet the criteria, is the same as adding the probability of A and B. And in this particular example, for this to be true, the events have to be mutually exclusive. With one throw of the dice, you can't get a two and a three. So let's look at an example where the events aren't mutually exclusive. Now we spin a coin and we throw a dice. What are the chances that we get either a heads on the coin or a three on the dice? But note that this includes the possibility that we get a heads and a three at the same time. These two events are not mutually exclusive. Well, there are 12 possible combinations of coin flips and dice rolling, and that's gonna be our denominator. Six of those 12 possibilities include flipping a heads, and so the chances of getting a heads is six over 12 or 0.5 or 50%, all good so far. And two of those scenarios include getting a three on the dice, either a three with the heads or a three with the tails. So the probability of getting a three is two over 12, which is 0.16. Now the question is, can we simply add these two numbers up? 
the 0.5 and the 0.16? And the answer is no, we can't. And it's because of this scenario in which we spin a heads and we throw a three, it's double counted. It's included in the calculation on the left and the calculation on the right. So to get the probability of flipping a heads or throwing a three, we need to add them together and then subtract that double count, which is the probability of getting a heads and throwing a three. And then we can easily calculate the answer. So the rule here is that the probability of A or B happening, so either event can happen to meet the criteria, is given by adding them together and then subtracting the probability of them both happening. And that's because of our double counting. Now this formula is what we use when they're not mutually exclusive. I will tell you that you can use this formula for mutually exclusive events, like rolling the two or rolling the three. And it's because if you did that, the probability of rolling them both is zero. And so you would simply be subtracting zero and it wouldn't matter. So now we're talking about conditional probability, the probability of A given B. In this case, we've got a bag that's got circles and squares and some of them are green and some of them are purple. Our question is, if we've taken out a shape and we know that it's green, what are the chances that it's a circle? Another way of saying that is that what is the probability of getting a circle given that we already have green? Well, given that we know that the shape is green, there are six possible outcomes in our denominator. Of those possibilities, only four of them are circles. And so the probability of getting a circle, given that we know that what we've got is green, is four over six or 0 0.66. In our last example, we're gonna be talking about events that are dependent. The question here is, what are the chances of being dealt two aces from a deck of cards? In this scenario, an ace is dealt, but not put back into the deck, so there's no replacement. And this means that the deck has changed before the second card is dealt. Let's look at how we can describe this using probability notation. The probability of getting two aces is the probability of getting the first ace times the probability of getting the second ace given the fact that we got the first ace. Let's look at this one step at a time. For our first ace, we've got four possible favorable outcomes out of 52 possible cards. So the probability is four over 52. All good so far. Now let's look at the probability of getting that second ace given the fact that we already got the first one. Remember that we only have three aces left and now there are only 51 cards in the deck. And so the chances of getting that second ace is three over 51. And so the probability of getting two aces is four over 52 times three over 51, which is 0 0.0045. Now stay and watch another video. If you click on the link on the screen right now, it'll take you to a playlist, which has got videos on statistics, probability, hypothesis testing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you're gonna find all of that useful. Otherwise, subscribe, comment, like, et cetera, et cetera. Thanks for watching, take care.